Okay, so you got some people who say, well, why do you need DAW integration? What What are you doing your tracks for, right? If you're just doing them to have a backing track to go out and, you know, and play a couple of tunes, or maybe you're a guitar player who likes to play solo, or maybe you're a singer, and maybe you're in a more of a folk realm, right, where you do, um, it's okay to have a single voice out there, right? But for people who do this type of stuff that I might do, um, you know, I need those, I need those extra tracks. And just bear with me just for a second. I'm just going to show you something. This is a song that I have out on Pandora that's right now, right? It's called Gone Away. And I, I made the song here at, in my home. I did all of the vocals. Um, I mixed it myself, <laughs> which was great that I actually ended up on Pandora. I got to tell you, you know, it was fantastic, right? But look at how many tracks I have a total of. 40, I have 46, what do I have? I have 40, I have 46 tracks. I have 46 tracks going on. I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have eight buses going on. So these 43 tracks are going into eight different buses so that I can control different elements of the mix. And also I have automation in here. I've got harmony lines that actually are words and not just oohs and ahs. You know, I start out with oohs and ahs, right? But it gets a little different after that. So I've got those going on in here. And I also have strings that I actually played myself. I played many strings myself in here, putting the strings in here, right? So again, so just to give you an idea, and this is going to be really quick. I'm not going to play this whole song for you, boy. But just to give you an idea of how much is going on. going on than what you may find and what you can do with a without a doll i'll just use the term without a doll maybe that doesn't work for you maybe you don't need all of that stuff and if you don't you know what that's absolutely great that is absolutely fantastic or maybe you just want to you just want to have your tracks go over into a doll maybe you just want to do a little bit of singing maybe you want to do you know do a more guitar playing or do a solo something like that fantastic but for people if you're trying to do the type of things that i do maybe you want to consider with the number of tracks and number the number of plugins and when i'm talking about plugins i'm talking about you know reverb delay compression you know <laughs> just uh eq you know just tons of things that i use to get to get a, a sound that is i'll just say that is radio ready now on with the tutorial of how i did DAW integration, I'm going to use a song that I made a couple of weeks ago called uh, Hello, It's Me, Todd Rundgren. I added a smooth jazz flavor to it, added a sax. So let's get on with that. I know you guys didn't hear me talk about DAWs and talk about my own stuff, right? So I want to show you how that was done, okay? So just give me a second there. I'm going to load it right up. So to start out with, I, I did a song a couple, of, a couple of weeks ago called Hello, It's Me. Had a nice saxophone. I took and I merged classic rock and I merged uh, R&B soul or whatever you want to call it together, right? and smooth jazz to give it an overall smooth jazz tone. It was a song by Todd Rundgren, and I love that song. So I decided to try it from a smooth jazz type flavor and a little bit of R&B. So I put the song together in Band in a Box. The entire song, the entire song, every component except the vocals were written in Band in a Box. And it's up on my screen right now. So you've got, you've got your Band in a Box. I use the 16th Pop Rock Ballad, right? I call it Hello Isis, right? But the most important thing here is that I want you to notice that my beats per minute. That is extremely important when I go to DAW integration because I need that to be my beats per minute because when I import into my DAW, I need the bars to line up so that I can cut, slice and cut and dice appropriately, right? So how do we do that, right? Well, first of all, and I've got an empty, I've got a blank um, uh, <laughs> sonar ready to go, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to hit DAW. So as I do DAW, notice the window shrunk. Right, so I've got my window shrunk here for DAW, and I'm going to open up my sonar. So now my sonar is open, and my DAW is open. And this is so, folks, this is so, so simple. So what I'm going to do is just got to take my instruments one by one. So I'm going to take the bass, and I'm going to drag it over to my DAW. Look at how I'm just, I'm just dragging it over. Just dragging it over to my DAW, right? And guess what? And it'll automatically start. And if you notice, it says generating real tracks. It's, it's generating real tracks for my DAW. Now, people say, well, how do you... 
how do you uh, create music with samples? Well, guess what? When I'm dragging this over into my DAW, it's creating a WAV file. And what is a WAV file? It is a sample. That's all it is. So I'm all, if you're doing any type of DAW integration, you're already using samples. It is not a big deal, right? So basically what I'm doing is, again, I, I took, and you have to take, I take each, now they have a, they have a, um, they have a component where you can actually take the entire WAV file over. Again, if you do that, though, you won't get any, any real editing capability. So I took, I t I'm going to take the bass track. I'm going to take the guitar track. I'm going to take the drums track, guitar track, guitar three, the saxophone. I'm going to take all those tracks and import them over into my DAW. And if I shrink band in a box down, and if you look at my DAW now, right, there's my, there's my bass track right there, right? And I'm going to take it and I'm going to move it over to, let me, I'm going to move it over to the start of the song. So I'm going to make sure I move it over to where the song starts at, right? All right. Which I didn't do it that time. I'm going to take it. Let me, let me do it again. I'm going to move it over to where the song starts. First bar, first bar, first track. And like I said, it's very important to do that. It is very, very important to have it start at that point in time. And notice right here, my DAW is set for 85 BPMs. It is so important for me to cut and slice. So now the bars line up. So now the song actually starts, the bass actually starts right where I wanted it. Bar three, beat one. That's exactly where I wanted it. So that's gonna start right there. So again, and I know you guys wanna see me load all of the samples in, that's, that's, that's boring, right? But that's all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna take it, I'm just gonna drag, I'll pick the drums for example. I'll just drag the drums over into onto a track, an empty track on my DAW. So I'm dragging it over, and what it's doing right now is actually notice the circle here. I want you to notice this little circle here, right in band in the box. That circle is creating a wave file. It's notice it says rendering audio tracks. Please wait, right? So it's actually creating a wave file for me in order to move it over into my DAW. Notice this. No, and if you notice up here, it's loading now. It's almost ready. Boom, it's ready. So if I shrink, if I shrink band of box down now, and if I go find my drum track and check it out, so my there's my drum track ready to go, right? And I'm going to take it again and I'm going to move it over to bar one. Now, I, sometimes I don't know why um, it doesn't start automatically, but it's starting on bar one. That's exactly what I want to happen. Now, if I play this, I've got my four beats right at right there. That's just the bass and the drum. We notice we already ready to go, right? So as I move the other tracks over again, I'll bring in the guitar, I'll bring in the sax, I'll bring in all of those types of things. So that's exactly how I bring um, wave, wave files from Band in the Box integration, Band in the Box integration to plug in into my DAW. This is fantastic. It works absolutely great. I couldn't ask for better, especially like I said, because I'm gonna add, I always add stuff later, right? Like a, a lot of my songs, I might add actual strings. I might go back and use a, a M audio, right, with a virtual synth and play some strings in. And of course, like I said, I'm a vocalist, right? So my vocals are are layered, right? <laughs> and so on and so forth. I can just go on forever. So hold on a second. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take, and I, I, you guys don't need to see me dragging tracks over, right? So we, I'm dragging tracks over. I'm going to show you what one of the sessions looks like once I have done the integration like I'm talking about. And of course, when you finish with that, if you just want to go to rec back to regular band in the box, right here, normal screen mode, boom, guess what? You got your band in the box back. So I'm going to close band in the box. And now I'm going to go straight to my DAW. And I'm going to open up this same song that I did, a full session with DAW integration. So I have taken all of my tracks now, and I have dragged all of my tracks over to uh, my sonar. And it came straight from band in the box. So I'm going to mute my vocals here. I'm going to mute all of the vocals. I can, I can actually do it just a, a, ma a major mute just by muting here. I'm, I'm just muting in my mixer here, right? So I'm going to mute all of my vocals, background vocals. I'm muting everything, right? And all I've got now is I've got, and I should have just the music playing. And this music is strictly band in a box. And I put my sax and I brought my sax and where I wanted my sax to be.
people say, okay, so they say, well, that's that's easy enough, right? I, I could I could do that within Band in the Box, and you can, and you can. However, I want you to notice something here. I want you to notice as I click here, I want you to notice these turn white. The reason why these turn white is because these were components of the beat that I wanted to maintain. I wanted that steady beat, right? Well, Band in the Box, sometimes they will put some changes in there, right? So I'll go and find the area of the beat that I really like. And I just to go to show you, <laughs> I'm going to show you something real quick. Is See, I could take that out. I can actually take that out. It's not even there now, right? But I wanted the beat to appear. I wanted certain uh, drum rolls. Do, 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 do. I wanted that to appear in certain places, right? So the DAW allows me to do that. And because of the fact that my timing up here at 85 B BPMs is the same as my timing in Band in a Box, it lines up with the bar absolutely perfectly, if you notice that. So that's another that's another nice trick. So one another thing I like about it is that I can change band in the box. Sometimes the guitars or different instruments will change the way the style of they're playing. So in this area, it was playing. This guitar was playing an actual picking type of pattern. Notice this picking type, of, which was really really smooth, right? But when it got here at bar 31, it started playing that distortion, that distortion sound, right? So it, but it will play it. It will play it at random, right? So I said, I, I want to I control when I want that guitar to play distortion. So because of the fact that I have it in my DAW now, I could actually cut and paste this loop so that the distortion guitar would be when I wanted to hear it. I only wanted to hear it in a certain area of the song. So I could do that by using it in my DAW, cutting the bar where the distortion started. And again, notice the distortion started here. So I'm cutting it and putting it exactly where I wanted it in the bar. And if you listen to it with the music, you will hear single notes and not get my distortion. That's, that's exactly the way I wanted it, right in that part right there. And that was awesome for that band. So I wanted that to be a little bit different, right? So that gives me that different feel that I was looking for. And the last thing, because I took you guys all day, I know you guys don't want to say, I ain't spent all day with this guy. <laughs> but the last thing that I wanted to show you was that someone asked me, Oh, and it allowed me also to bring in the sax when I wanted the sax to come in. So when did I want that sax to come in? I didn't want it to come in throughout. I had a certain bar that I wanted the sax. So I could actually take and cut it so that the sax only played when I wanted it to play. So now the sax actually comes in here. And another thing that I also did with the sax is I wanted it to be more like a sax in a live setting. So I put a little reverb on the sax. So I've got a reverb here from Cakewalk that I actually added a little bit of reverb to the sax so the sax is not so dry. I also added a little, little, little reverb to the drums also because I wanted the drums to have a little atmosphere around them, right? So now I think the sax sounds a whole lot better with a little bit of reverb on it. And, 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 and another point about people talk about reverb all the time, right? Well, here's the thing about reverb. A lot of times when you hear reverb in single isolation, it sounds really, really overly done. But once it's mixed with the rest of the music, it actually blends in pretty good. So playing it with the rest of the music. So you don't hear, you don't hear that reverb like you heard it before because music kind of absorbs it. And it's the same as when you go see something live, right? And it'd be kind of boomy a little bit, you know, you get that reverb. Well, lastly, so what I did was somebody said, well, how'd you get that call and answer saxophone near the, near the end of the song? Well, what I did was I took and I cut the wave. So I took components of the saxophone solo in the beginning, this area in here. Again, because I have bar settings, right? I went and just cut little pieces of the saxophone to call and answer what my vocals were saying. So in the end of the song, this is strictly cut from what I had already done in the saxophone. And when you hear it against the vocals, it actually sounds even better because again, it's a call, it's a straight call and answer. I'm saying something, the sax is answering me. I'm saying something, the sax is answering me, and so on and so forth. Da, 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 right? You know? So anyway, so I'm actually doing a call and answer with the saxophone. And all this, again, I always talk about it in my videos, I always talk about song dynamics, how to give a song a different dimension that it maybe didn't have before. So guess what? So again, so now I'm setting it up again with my vocals and... Don't change, don't change.
flexibility to do some of the things that I like to do within a song. So the DAW integration feature in Band in the Box and how it interacts with my sonar, and, and there may be some people who use Cubase or, you know, Mixcraft or Pro Tools or whatever, but I like the, the fact that I can use this. And also I have more plugins at my disposal, which really help a vocalist, right? You know, uh, us vocalists, we kind of, we kind of need those plugins to help us, to help us, you know, kind of stay on pitch sometimes. All of us get off a little off pitch every now and then, right? So again, so I've got like my lead vocals, for example, if you look at my lead vocal and my lead vocal, what do I have on my lead vocal? My lead vocal, I've got, I've got a little uh, slight auto tune. I've got some throat. I've got some nectar. Which is a which is a multi plugin gives me a lot of capabilities and I also I probably let me see if I put it on here maybe and I use the CLA dynamic compressor I love this right here this because this is a leveling amplifier which will keep my voice from kind of going all over the place and blasting you know and blasting everybody out right so I use that a lot I and I use that on almost everything I do so what happens is that when my voice comes together and all the vocals come together hey, seeing you. Seeing you, baby. Again, now it sounds, guess what? Everybody says, seeing anything as much as I do. And then my harmonies are there, right? Now again, it sounds echoey. Yep, it does sound echoey, right? But once you add it with the music, though. That's how I use it integration wise. I use uh, I use uh, Band in a Box and I use their DAW integration feature. I drag and drop the waves. And again, these are waves and waves are nothing but samples. So what really cracks me up again, people just, I don't, I don't know, but I don't understand people sometimes. They go, oh, well, he wrote that song. All he did was he just used samples, right? Well, when you do Band in a Box and you, whether you import it into real band or whatever, those are samples, my friend. Those are samples, you know. So you, all of us use samples. Any part that you don't actually play at that time is a sample. If it's a wave, it is a sample. So if somebody says, you know, well, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know how to use waves or whatever. Well, if you're doing, doing real bad or some of those other things, guess what? You are using samples. So hope this helps. Hope this helps. Again, I know it's, it's rather short. But the Band of Box integration feature is great. The DAW integration um, um, capability is absolutely fantastic. It works for people like me. I love this type of stuff, you know. And again, the reason why I'm a big DAW integration person is because I do layer a lot of stuff. I have a lot of stuff that's going on in a lot of my songs. You know, now maybe you don't need that. Maybe you just want to jam the guitar or maybe you don't have background vocals or maybe you just have, you know, maybe you just have a single singer or something like that. And if you do, then maybe you probably, maybe you don't even need DAW integration. Maybe, maybe some of the other products will do just as well for you. But again, for people like me, if you want to do the type of music or the type of songs that I do that have a lot of other stuff going on, um, you may want to you may want to look at doing a DAW integration, and this plugin is absolutely fantastic. Okay, hey, see you next time. 